Okay. So the question, this is not a question about, this is not going to be a discussion about how do you time trades. Um, I just want to actually show you. how to, if you uh, want to buy a stock for long term, how do you actually start a position? How do you start opening a position? And how do you start adding? And what points do you actually add to a position? It's the simplest thing in the world. First thing I want to show you is what are some of the main moving averages that are of importance? Why are they important? Because all the hedge fund managers, all the money managers, all the technicians, the whole entire world looks at them, right? So it's kind of, it's important you should look at them. So that Let's first look at the main market, right, ESPY, and then I will show you. You guys can see my screen. I want to make it really quick because I have to run at 6.30. Yeah, we can see the screen. Okay, yeah. So the simplest thing in the world is this, right? So you take your 20-day, 20, 20 rate of change, right? That's one thing that you can add. 20-day rate of change, and add it to your port, uh, to whatever um, whatever chart you have. If the rate of change is positive, if it's above zero, the market is trending up. This is the simplest and easiest thing in the world that uh, most people don't follow. It doesn't whipsaw as much, okay? If it goes down, market's trending below. If it's up, it's positive. The other rate of change that you should also use in conjunction with is the 125-day rate of change. Change, add another one, and change this value to 125. I'll show you why 125. 125 is the six-month rate of change. Uh, that basically shows you a long-term, longer-term view. After this point, so after this point, the market's basically uh, turned positive for the long term. And if you see, it's, it's trending over all the moving averages. Now, after this point, you wouldn't want to short the market after this point. You wouldn't want to be short the market. Once the rate of change, 20, 20 rate of change is basically rate of change for one month. Once it goes above zero, stays there. It could dip, right? But you could come back up again. And as long as the rate of change 20 is staying above, you can even make a 21 if you want. 20 or 21, it doesn't matter. It doesn't, doesn't change much. But as long as the 21 or 20 rate of change is above zero, markets tend to stay positive, right? So it could be waning in the short term, but as long as it stays above, don't think too hard about it, right? It looks like the momentum is waning, right? But as long as it stays above, just make, keep it simple for you. Markets positive, okay? How do you actually buy something for the long term. You look at the three different moving averages and whenever it touches, so some stocks like Microsoft, they will give you an opportunity to, they will never give you an opportunity to come up to the 200 day moving average. Try to time your long term buys when it touches the 50 day moving average and diverses from there. I don't know. Let me just mute myself. Okay, any questions? So if you look at it, different points where you can add to the position is it touched the 50-day moving average, came in, you could have added to the position here. Uh, some people like to add to the 20, I don't. So if you're a long-term buyer, just all of that, but it touches the 50-day moving average. Some stocks, which are very high flyers, are probably not going to give you that chance a lot, right? So if you if you really want to chase, add it maybe to the 20-day moving average. But otherwise, try to, if you're a long-term buyer, 
don't go for anything under uh, try to try to time it at the 15-day moving average. So if you look at this chart, Tesla on 125 day has been positive. It only dipped in for a short time, but otherwise it's always been positive. And look at the 20-day rate of change. So this was a good time to buy Tesla, right? At if the latest point was about when it cost nine. Uh, or something like that, 964. The last time this was around 807, um, and here at the last resistance level, which is around 700. And the time before that was here at 554. Time before that, if you would have, could have bought Tesla, was around here, this point. That's when the rate of change turned positive. At 500, um, and way before that, the rate of change turned positive here on December 13th, December 10th, around that week. Um, let's look at some of the other stocks. TWU. So here's a good point to add to the stock: 15 June. Okay. So if the rate of change is way high, like this, right? So it goes in ebbs and flow, right? It goes above and in crests, hills, and in valleys. So don't add and don't be chasing a stock when your rate of change, when your 20-day rate of change is at speed. The simplest reason is, so in the last 20 days, you had a 50% gain. And this is the last, it, it basically coincides with the last peak. Normally, the stock runs up 50%, pulls back, runs up 50%, pulls back, right? Every stock's going to run up to a different amplitude, okay? You don't want to be chasing a stock when it's trying to hit its normal peak. You want to wait till it comes in and touch the 50-day moving average. And you, if you'll see that a lot of other things happen, look, there is a resistance level formed here at 32. Here. Right? You could have added it here if you really wanted to, but here, this was a good spot, right? Because it's the 20-day is below zero, and it touched the 50-day moving average. Again, it broke through. You can add again. Don't panic. I mean, if you're holding it for the long term, this is your second opportunity to add to it. If you missed this one, had it gone up and continued trending up, then yet, yeah, I mean, this was the only chance you'd get. But if it pulls back again on this level and touched below the 50-day, reversed again, touched, went below the 50-day, reversed above, this is your good chance and opportunity to buy it, right? Overall, the stock is in an uptrend, so you don't need to worry about anything. Right? Overall, the stock is in an uptrend. It's above the 200-day, the 50-day moving averages. So every time it touches the 50-day moving average, then you should buy it. Uh, let me just make sure that I get rid of the 20 to make it even more cleaner for you guys. Um, and also draw the 400 day moving average. 400. Some people also look at this 400 day moving averages. But most, of, most likely you're never going to get that chance in. Uh, okay, let's look at this. So, in this case, uh, do you guys have a favorite stock we can look at that you have always wondered, oh, where do I buy it? Where do I buy it? Let's just see it quickly. Guys, do you have a favorite stock that you want me to look at? Then we can look at where would we buy it historically. AMD. AMD, okay. Who is this? Okay. So with AMD, um, you wouldn't be chasing the stock here, right? Look, this is the... Um, amplitude, the highest high that it formed, you don't want to be chasing the stock here at this point. You don't want to be chasing the stock. Now it dropped below, but at the same time, it's un so when it reverses above the 50-day moving average, here, it reversed above the 50-day moving average, I would buy the stock over here. I would, okay, if I was holding it for the long term. I'm not talking about trading. Everybody think about it. I'm not talking about trading. If I was trading and I bought the stock here and it reversed on me, I would get out. This would be my stop. 
this would be my stop and I would get out. But because I'm holding it for the long term, this is just my buy point. Um, again, now it broke above the 50 day again. I would buy it here. I would buy it here at 22. I would buy here 26. Um, again, it's below. I wouldn't do anything. This is just chopping. So you had multiple opportunities. I would buy it here at 30. I wouldn't touch anything now at this point, after this point. There's, you could buy it here. It's kind of close enough, but uh, hasn't touched the 50, but still, this is a spot you can add to. Uh, now it's finally trading above. This is a spot you can buy it at. Touches of the 50 day moving average, right? Um, here, here. So these are spots you can buy. So, any, you guys understand uh, what I'm trying to get across to everyone? Guys, do you have any questions? We're going to end the call now. Yeah, got a quick question. We're going to end the call now. Yeah, I think we have good. Some people, some people actually want to wait for a very, very uh, like huge opportunity. They want to wait to till something crosses the 200-day moving average. Draw the 50-day moving average, 200-day moving average. Some people want to wait till it touches the 200-day the moving average. The problem is some of the stocks they they touch the 200-day once in a lifetime, right? Or the 400-day once in a lifetime. If you were just if you want to add to a stock, I think touching it on a on a touch of 50, it's a good enough point. It doesn't happen too often, but it happens often enough where it gives you good opportunities to get in these points. Um, look at Apple. Um, yeah, so Apple gave you Apple didn't give you any opportunity except here, August 19. Uh, nothing there. Then again. Touch 200 day this year. Um, here on 274. Uh, now, if you want to add to Apple, if you want to, I I don't like Apple, but if you want to add to Apple, this would be the area. Remember where this 200 day moving average is, or somewhere around here. If it just below there, be 40. If you if you are a long term Apple bull, right? Um, let's look at another stock. Uh, let's look here. The mRNA. So Moderna, right? Everybody says, well, Moderna ran up. We picked it up at 26. That's when I sent out the tweet to everybody to pick it up. So this vertical line that you see in Moderna, these are the buy points that I highlighted for my group. So the people that are in our Telegram group. Uh, at that time, we weren't in Telegram. At that time, I think we were still in WhatsApp. But I posted alerts for Moderna at that time. After that, it had gone up a lot. There was no way for us to catch it, but then it consolidated. And once I was breaking, I was like, that's another point where you can buy Moderna. If you haven't bought it at this point, you're better off waiting. So these vertical lines are your, your congestion points, your compression points, and where your 50 day, it's closer to your 50 day, those are good opportunities to buy them, right? Um, this would be chasing. This is another good opportunity. Look. It gave you another opportunity, so you could buy Moderna again at 49 or under or around 50 dollars. Um, then again, give you another opportunity around 60 bucks. Okay. Moderna is a very hot stock right now because they look like they're going to be front runners. Them and Arcturus or BNDX, the Chinese company, was I think partnering with Pfizer. Um, so look at this. I mean, it's pretty sweet, right? So if you had done, if you do dollar cost averaging, uh, the problem with that is, uh, look, I mean, I've gotten pissed off many times and I've told people that it doesn't work. I've, I've written out simulations and uh, shown people that, I mean, uh, statistically it doesn't work. But if you want to choose to do it, a lot of people do it. There's nothing against it, right? I mean, you can choose to do it. But the problem, I'll explain to you, the problem with dollar cost averaging is because you're constantly buying a set amount every day. If it falls from a certain point, you you don't have a stop underneath it, right? So had you bought over here and the stock reversed on you, you would drop only a little bit and you would get stopped out. So you wouldn't get hurt a lot. 
But if you had consistently chased it up all the way, then you would have a huge drawdown if the stock reversed on you. So listen, if you had if you bought the stock here on a touch of the 50 and it rever and it went up, let's just say it didn't go up and it turned down, you would because you bought the stock over here, right at 61. If you need to drop from 61 to 50, 56, 57, you probably won't lose much, right? Maybe a uh, five percent. But if you were chasing it, or if you just buy without thinking, and now, and if the stock started dropping, what's the biggest thing people do? No, should I hold? Should I hold? What should I do? Should I panic? Should I hold? That's what people do most of the time, right? So that's something that I want you guys to avoid. Look at this other stock. Uh, let's just say you missed an opportunity in Arcturus. That's the other stock which also uses the mRNA technology, right? Um, there's no way you could have bought the stock here because it wasn't even trending at that time. I mean, this is at the point where we picked up. Uh, if you missed the boat, you missed the boat. Don't worry about it. it came back up, reversed. This is a good point. Right? Need about okay. Uh, o N E M. This is a stock that I like. Uh, this is like Teladoc. Touching 50. Add here. Add here. Add here. Don't do anything right now. Okay. Uh, pretty simple. Hey, Arslan, this is Zach. I, I had a quick question about uh, using the rate of change indicator in conjunction with this. So you're you're looking at the daily charts when you're when you're making this uh, assessment. Um, 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 okay. Don't um, the rate of change. I'm saying let's just say it for QQQ. Let's just look at the QQQ. Okay. Um, if it's above, if the rate of change is above zero, market's positive. Let's just, if the market's positive, look for longs right now. Now, for the long-term buys, I want you guys to look at, own, and again, this call is only for people that want the simplest thing in the world. So I'm not mixing multiple indicators right now. This is not a trading class. It's just a very simple, long-term buying strategy for people that don't want to be bothered with anything. So for them, I'm just telling them, use the 50 and 200 day moving averages. I don't want to throw in another ingredient, which is rate of change for them. But go ahead, you can ask the question. I'll try, I'll answer your question. No, no, that's fine. I mean, I think that's a, that's a good clarification. I was trying to see if there was some correlation that you were looking for with both indicators using the, the 50 or 200 day moving average. Yeah, so the, the other thing I have, that the, 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 what I do with the 20, and again, the reason I don't want to answer this question because it's going to confuse a lot of other people who just want to, I, I only want to give them one tool right now, which is the 200 day and the 50 day um, uh, moving average. Um, I like to see the 21 or the rate of change, the 21, to, to not be making a peak. I want it to be in the valley. So if it's in, if it's basically dipped, this is a good point for me. Any Anywhere. I don't know if it, look, at this point, at this point, I already know that it's high, right? It just makes sense. It's just high. At this point, I still know it's high. At this point, I mean, it's back down to where it was, close to zero. But I don't know if the stock's going to reverse right now. But I'm just going to take a leap of faith. It's touching the 200-day moving out at the 50, and I'm going to buy. Um, and then, I mean, it, it went up in this case, but um, it could have gone down too. But this is a much safer spot to buy. This is a much safer spot to buy the stock than this spot, right? Would you agree? Buying it something at 40 is more dangerous than buying something at 30, especially in this case. That's, that's the only thing I want you guys to understand is whenever there's something that rallies hard, wait for a pullback. The simplest pullback is when it touches the 50. That's it. Yeah, any other questions? Let's look at not another so let me look at some of my other questions. Uh, uh, this is Tawab. Sorry, I joined a little late. I saw your note. No problem. No problem. Quick question. You said uh, on the pullback, when you consider potentially buying, uh, when it hits the 50-day moving average? Yeah, it, roughly, right? So look, this stock, uh, Livongo Health, right? This is this is a smaller stock. It's like a, it's less than, what's the market cap for this guy? Um, it's like 10 billion stock, uh, 10 billion dollar stock. It's not very, um, it's not a very big stock in terms of market cap. So, um, yeah, I normally look at the 
touch of the 50 or at least close to this. So here it, it didn't touch the 50, it didn't do anything. Here it just went sideways for a while. Again, this is for more of a trading. For stocks that are shorter, like that are, that are smaller market cap, like under 100, 150 billion, uh, you gotta use the 20 day moving average. Or you have to use um, in conjunction with the, the rate of change. But for other stocks, for most people wanna buy something in Amazon. Right, so for Amazon, anything with the, the as close as you can get to the 50 day moving average, and this whole rate of change should go up and should have come down a lot. So, look, look at this area, right? It's a lot lower than this area, it needs to be, it should have pulled back a lot. And then, uh, so what, does it make sense what I'm saying? Look here, yeah. So, so the yeah. three indicators you're looking at is uh, rate of change, 50-day moving average, and then you also mentioned 200-day moving average. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Uh, so you're saying on a when it pulls back, you want to focus on the 50-day moving average to get in. Yeah, sometimes look, in Amazon's case, because the market's running so hot, look, I'm going to go slowly, right? So even at this point, your rate of change 21 is pretty heated. It's very far from its 200 days. 200 days, 2100, and this is very hard, right? You just look at the chart. It's very, very, very simple. As long as this is a horrible point to buy at 2410, it's still bad. Don't buy it. Okay. At this point, look, it never touched the 50, and it just yep. reversed on you, right? So sometimes things will run away from you. That's possible. And um, they may not. So for these scenarios, you can use the 20. But I didn't want to add the 20 right now for a lot of other people because the 20 and the rate of change 21 is still higher. But you can use any of these moving averages. I don't, I don't recommend using the 20 right now because it, it, when you're when you're using the 20, you're you're getting into the realm of trading more than investing but if you're investing just stick with the the 50 look so here this kind of gets close to the 50 at this point this is the day when it was 2332 and your 50 was trading at 2260 right so the gap between just like three percent or something so you can say yeah this is a this is a good buy point for Amazon because at least you didn't chase it, and the rate of change is still low. Do you, do you guys see, follow what I'm saying? Look at the rate of yep. change, 21. It's kind of it went up, kind of petered down, and, you know, it's like died down, and then the, it came very clo as close to the the 50 as possible. Um, there's no way. Look, I try to time it a lot, but for people that are buying and holding it for the long term. The simplest thing is don't try to guess. If it's close within like 3 4% of the 50 day, or if it pierces through the 50, touches the 50, and whatever, as long as it's somewhere in the vicinity and this is low, like basically it's gone up and come down, it's low, buy it. Don't think too hard. The other thing is, I mean, if you knew a little bit of technical analysis, you would know that here is your support level. Right, so this stock is so much in demand that it never even came up to the support level. This is as good as you will get on this thing. And in other times, and this is not like a pinpoint needle where it's going to make and match to the nth cent value. Let's look at another stock. Yeah, yeah. What? What period are you looking at? The daily, chart daily. daily for for how long? For just look at it for one year. Well, I mean, okay. whichever chart you're looking at. Um, give me look at some, give me a stock that you want to buy. Right. Nvidia. Okay. okay. Um, there's no there's nothing I can do in Nvidia right now. If I was adding for the long term. And it's not close. Maybe here, this was the point. Like when NVIDIA came in 365, 
that was where I could have started a position in India. Okay. Uh, it consolidated, came back. Like this is a, the closest that I see it. And it, because the 20, 21 day also died, kind of. So, I mean, relatively speaking, the rate of change is lower than where it was a couple of months back or the last peak that we had. And so, this is the best point that I could see 367 or whatever to pick up NVIDIA. And this is, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about initiating a long term position. For trading, my answer would be different. And yet, give me another stock. So, oh wait, Arslan, before you um, answer the stock, I ask a quick question. Um, this is Basim. Um, so, why am I, so you mentioned you're just looking at this, actually, you're going off with a 50 day moving average. So, why do I even bother with the 200 day moving average? If you're telling me just go ahead and buy off of the 50 day moving average? Because your stock has to be above the 200 day moving average. Do not touch anything that is below the 200 day moving okay. average. Okay, so above the 200 and it needs to hit closer to 50, and then the ROC needs to be basically low around the zero. Yeah, ROC needs to be low. Don't check. Okay. Don't, don't, okay, so the three, if I could give you guys three rules for any stock is don't chase an ROC which is rising because the next thing that's going to happen is going to drop, right? Because it's already made its move. It's already went from minus 30 to 40. It rallied 70%. Something which has rallied about, you know, 50, 48% the next thing that's going to happen is it's going to just pull back or it's going to go sideways. So wait for the whole momentum to just die down. So it just chalk momentum by down. Then it can start to mm -hmm. continue up again. So there's three rules. First thing, it has to be above 200 and moving average. It has to come and come as close to the 50 as possible. And then it has to be uh, not at the peak of the rate of change has to be in the values of the rate of change. So this is a value of the rate of change close to 50. Don't change it here. This is a, the value that's close to the 50 day moving average. Okay, so that makes sense. And then as far as how you're buying, I know in the past you've, you've talked about buying in increments, if it's 25% or increments. Um, I mean, entirely up to you. You want to split your position in in four steps, in three steps, in one step, it's um, it's all a function of how confident you are, right? Like, so for example, I bought this stock. I bought QMHF, uh, Planet 13 uh, Holdings. Now, uh, this is a, a bead dispensary, okay? I personally don't think morally there's any issue with bead because uh, I've done enough research. I think it's, uh, I wouldn't invest in any, uh, in uh, in Philip Morris or any liquor brand, STS, even though it's a great stock, I think. But so I think this is fine. Um, now, this thing has been it's it's a brand new stock, just came out, and uh, so th there's no t uh, there is some technical that I'll explain on this stock, but because it's a new IPO, um, I don't have a lot of information. I have actual fundamental information about the stock that even in the worst of times, it actually did pretty good. On the, uh, in terms of it, their business and their stores are pretty busy and the brands that they own are pretty good. But um, this is a spot where I got in and it look, it satisfied all my rules, right? So if compare, look, it is above the 200 day moving average. It's above the 50 day moving average. It's kind of gone sideways and it's established like at least some sort of price pattern where it's been able to hold 155, 156, and if the rate of change is in the valley portion of it, it's not in the the, the, the top, right? It's not you're not buying the the, the hill, you're, you're buying in the valley section. So this is right. the, the day when I added to the stock this day, and it and it came here. I didn't buy here. I have no idea. It can actually drop, but it popped again this day, and that's when it confirmed that hey, this thing actually has decent support here. There's two moving averages under, underneath which are providing its support. When it's popped up, I said, well, this is the day I want to buy. And this, what confirms it is um, if you look at volume. If you look at volume, this is the biggest thing here. So I wanted to invest uh, an X amount in this stock. And uh, 
I said, if I, I don't want to do it in three steps, right? I was pretty confident because with this much volume, reversal with this much volume, I was pretty, um, I had a good degree of confidence in the stock when I bought it here. This is the day when I started, 1.8, I think was my price, uh, 1.8 something. Yeah, yeah, this is my price point on the stock. And since then, it's up, what, 20% something in three days. But uh, do you see everything come, coming together, uh, like a level, a price level uh, that is able to maintain above the 20 day, above the 50 day? It's in the, the valley section of this. The, the volume reversal up is, is big. So these are the things you should look for when you even when you are timing long term buys. Here, throughout this entire thing, so I knew about this stock a long time ago. I knew about the stock when it came public, but I never pulled the trigger on it because uh, it's been consistently just heading lower and lower and lower, and then it's below the 200 day moving average. Once it's above, once it's above the 200 day average, systematically. A lot of money managers, it will start coming up in their hands. That is why I want to look at something. And it doesn't matter if something's really good. It, yeah, you may find something that's very cheap, but it also may be dead money for a while before it starts to move up. So you want to look at something which is all the Can you look at your cloud flare? Cloud flare, yeah. I think, or either okay. one, that or fastly, one of your CDN. Yeah, so look here, perfect. This is like the most perfect example of timing. This, the rate of change is at the peak, okay? But it's the 50-day moving average, it, it, it violates the, the rate of change law, but the 50-day law is fine, right? Um, because it's a new stock, again, it just started trending up, and this is the support here. Touch the struggle, touch the struggle again. Um, let's see again. This is the other buy level. Look at this. Perfect. Remember what I was telling you guys? Rate of change needs to pull back. Don't buy at the peak. Buy it here. Why I bought here, I have a different reason. That's a different um, <clears throat> algo that I have in my brain that works and it still picks up in the stream in short term. But for long term, touch of 50 at the at the valley section, at the valley section, touch close to the, or sideways or whatever, as close to the 50 as possible. Look at this section, look at this section. These are spaces. Now, I pulled the trigger here uh, today because I was uh, I was getting it was not a very because look this thing pulled down in the valley section it might go sideways right so it could actually pull back next week again to this point to 34 it might be red for a little bit um, but this is an area anywhere around this area is uh, I think it's a good here's Lan. Hey, a quick question. Uh, so, like for this particular stock, you know, when you're doing your analysis, so just the fact that it just dropped off so significantly or like so fast, does is this like any of your concern, or you just look at the technicals and say, okay, you like the company, you're going to buy it, or? Well, I have to like the company fundamentally. I have to number one is thematic investing. Thematic investing means the theme that the stock follows. I understand that theme. Why the theme is working. so? This is a CDN stock. It's an edge computing stock. What is edge computing? Why is edge computing going to continue to work in the future? What's the what are the prospects of edge computing? You have to understand that. Once you understand that, are people going to continue working from home? Is work from home more prevalent going forward? Yes. Then you try to find the best guys in that world, which is Fastly, but Fastly is too fast now, <laughs> and uh, then and or Net. Um, and then you try to. Then the third step is once you find what you want, you want to time getting into that. So I wouldn't buy here. I wouldn't buy here. I wouldn't buy here. So it's it's what A B C. It's like a whole step process, right? A fundamentally, the the theme works. The area that this business, the business
surface area is good. Okay. What, if, if somebody came to you and said, do you want to buy a mall, like a brick and mortar mall, would you buy it? You probably wouldn't, right? I mean, that's just an area that's not hot anymore. Would you buy a newspaper? Unless it was dirt cheap. I mean, nobody reads newspapers anymore, right? So stay away from areas that are not hot. That's the most important thing. Energy, banks, all this stuff, these, these are all dinosaur areas, man. Just stay away from it. So first thing is get get your bearing straight on the area, number one. Number two, look for the, the hot stock in that area, okay? That's the market leader. Number three, learn to time when to get into that hot stock. Hot stock is never going to be in your lap, okay? Like it's, it's never going to, it's going to come in, right? But it's not going to be plopped in your lap. It's not going to be like, here, buy me, and then as soon as you buy it, it's going to go up like 400%. That's never going to happen. There's going to be a lot of risk associated. Every time you pick up a hot stock, there will be an analyst who will say, oh, this stock is way too overrated. It's going to fall down. It's going to go to zero. Don't listen to anybody. Understand the theme. Uh, understand it. Yeah. And yeah, this is again, but, um, yeah. Yeah, it's Atik. Uh, how are you? Thanks uh, for this session. Uh, MT, MTBC is uh, another stock. I was tracking it for last five years, and it's, they, they are now providing telemedicine services as well, and they are big on providing like cloud billing services. Isn't MTBC, and, MTBC is a Bitcoin thing, is it? Huh? Isn't MTBC a Bitcoin thing? That's just GTBC. No, no, no. MTBC is uh, Medical uh, Billing and Transcription uh, Company. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, it's a small uh, cap, but they they grew uh, pretty pretty big uh, in last five years. I'm I'm like I'm into it from from 2016, mm -hmm. so I'm watching it for a long time. But I just wanna understand a bit of technicals because uh, I was looking to buy this again, but uh, just just this was a good point to buy. Look, it came close to zero. This is a good point. Six six dollars. Uh, this yeah. would be also a good point to buy, but because it dipped, but it never touched close to zero, but it probably reversed. Because look, this is a good, it's probably a very hot stock, right? And yeah. it's, it's hard that it was ever, it, it, hot stocks never give you a lot of chances to come touch them at the 50. So this, yeah. was, the only chance, this was the only chance you had. Okay. All right. This okay. Is another it's, thing. it's it's a you pretty good add, stock maybe, as well. You can add maybe a little bit over here. Okay. Okay. But if you didn't add it because it went up, made a flag, went above, right? But this is another chance, the semi chance I would say that you had. It's above. It it cleared above the last resistance levels. Okay. These are the last resistance levels. Once it clears above this level, it actually looks like it's going up a lot. It's gonna probably clear go up. It just looks like from the chart. Look, don't quote me. Yes. This freaking thing can drop tomorrow. And uh, say, oh, Arsalani said that, no, I have no idea. I do not have a crystal ball. But just based sure, on what's sure. happening, <laughs> look, based on what's happening, the volume is picking up. When it, the volume picked up when it broke out. It went back and it tested this, okay. this breakout. Then it reversed very heavy volume. This is great, as good as it gets on technicals. As good as this thing gets on technicals. This is the best entry you can take. Okay, this over here, yeah. this point, this point. This is the best entry you can take on technical. And obviously, okay. it went from seven to uh, fourteen, and then pulled back. And look, look at the stock market just went sideways for two days, and look at what it did. It is so hot. People want to get into it. Volume picked up so much, and boom. But do you chase it? I personally don't chase it. I would buy it here. No, no. If I miss yeah. it. Too bad. If I missed it here, too bad. Look, 50-day crest, uh, sorry, uh, valleys, 50-day. Valleys, 50-day uh, valleys. Okay? Yep. I missed it. This is fine. Once it picks up steam, it's not going to touch the 50-day. Then it's going to dance on the 20-day moving average. Okay. Thanks, uh, Arsalam. Yeah, this is, this is another good stop that I was tracking here. Yeah. Right, any other questions?